As millions of Americans debate whether to roll up their sleeve for the COVID vaccine, manufacturers are trying to build trust. You know, that's right. So they're sharing these testing methods and promising to keep politics out of the process. Tonight, Reveal investigator Rebecca Lindstrom exposes efforts by the government, the federal government, that could erode that faith in the system. If you want to get vaccinated, I certainly think you should have the right. But don't look for Karen Kane at the pharmacy when the COVID-19 vaccine becomes available. Kane is an anti-vaxxer. Her daughter Lauren lived with daily debilitating seizures for 15 years after receiving a bad DPT vaccine as a newborn. It was full of mercury. The vaccine destroyed her brain. Kane will never get what she really wants her daughter healthy and back in her arms. But through the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, or VICP, she did get reimbursed for medical bills and money to stay home and care for her daughter. The process took years. I was treated horribly in vaccine court, horribly. But at least King got to go to court, and if denied, she could appeal. Anyone injured by the COVID vaccine won't have those opportunities. That's because the Department of Health and Human Services has decided to use a different program. I am extremely concerned about the countermeasures program. The countermeasures injury compensation program was created to cover damage caused by treatments for pandemics and security threats, such as H1N1 and Ebola. In the past decade, 446 people filed claims with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. 29 received compensation. It is an administrative program controlled strictly by the secretary. Attorney Mike Momo spent 30 years working on vaccine cases for the Department of Justice. He believes the federal government wants to keep COVID-19 injuries out of the VICP, which has a higher record of compensation. Two years ago, the reveal exposed the most common injury in the program had quickly become Serva, a shoulder injury from a vaccine given too high or too deep. For Susan, it was a tetanus shot. This is all my doctor's visits. Okay. Most of them. For Debbie, it was the flu shot. Both needed surgery to repair tears in their rotator cuff. I mean, I went through a lot emotionally uh, and physically, and it was uh, it was very difficult. But HHS is now trying to remove serve as an injury directly connected to a vaccine. And it seems they're trying to do it before the COVID vaccine can lead to even more claims. The reveal obtained an internal Department of Justice email from 2017 after a serva was added to the program. Buried in the redacted pages is a reference to the attorney's extraordinary average caseload, even at that time. To just start fresh and eliminate things that they feel are just too much work um, is, is an insult to all those people. The proposal also seeks to give HHS control over which new vaccines, like COVID, will make it into the program. I think Congress tried to get away from that by passing the Vaccine Act in the first place. They wanted to make sure that vaccines were available. Drug manufacturers would continue to make the vaccines. By politicizing it, you're just presenting another disincentive for people to get COVID vaccine in the first place. Kane now serves on the nation's Childhood Vaccine Advisory Board, which is supposed to help guide HHS's decisions on the injury program. I'm not there as a scientist or a doctor. I'm there from a parent's perspective. She is bewildered that even after the board's unanimous vote against the proposal, HHS is moving forward and doing it at a time when trust and confidence are needed most. I feel, um, what is the word? I'm extremely disappointed and surprised. HHS declined my request for an interview, but in a written statement said it has serious concerns that Serva claims are contrary to law. And even without the changes, it would take months for the COVID vaccine to be added into the VICP. The deadline for public comment is January 12th, just days away from the next presidential inauguration.